Let's move on to soft commodity prices. They're certainly having a poor month in May, with only May's making modest gains, while cocoa, sugar and coffee all falling sharply on the back of concerns of Cote d'Ivoire's low-quality beans, uh, that being rejected at its port. For an update on Africa's soft commodities, Edward George, Head of Soft Commodities Research at EcoBank, running us through the performance uh, that we did see coming through for the month of May. So overall, uh, Edward, when we look at what's taking place on the soft commodities front, is there an overriding uh, you know, theme that is taking place or individual factors uh, that we have to look at for the specific soft commodities? Well, I think for the main soft commodities, it's definitely clear that uh, generally there are ample supplies and expectations of even further supplies coming onto the market. If you look at cotton, you look at sugar, you look at coffee, even cocoa as well. So I think that is depressed prices. And certainly if you look at a lot of them, they're reaching lows which are records for two or three year lows and generally are relatively inexpensive. But I think that also is going to lead to a response in terms of consumption. If you look at a lot of these commodities which are consumed by human beings, um, the prices uh, have really been very high um, in recent years and now that they've gone down would expect us to be a response. So certainly in the case of cotton and also for cocoa we expect a bit of a rally in prices later in the year. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about cocoa and what's uh, driving those prices right now when it comes to uh, specifically uh, the, the quality of the beans in uh, West Africa. Um, what, what is the problem there? I mean, are they able to sort, to sort this out when it comes to uh, the issues around those low quality beans? Is there a shift uh, to, to focus more on the high quality beans? Well, a part of it is a reflection of the fact that we are in the mid-crop in Cote d'Ivoire and the light crop in Ghana. Uh, beans from those crops are always smaller and of lower quality. But uh, I think what caused a bit of a spike in prices last month was that we saw um, uh, an increase in rejection of beans, particularly in Cote d'Ivoire, not just at the ports, but also at the farm gate by the local buyers. And that led to concerns that there would be a drop in supplies, which is what pushed up futures prices. Since then, they've fallen off quite sharply. Um, and I think this reflects the fact that actually deliveries are continuing. Cote d'Ivoire is well ahead of last season. Ghana's only about 7% behind. And so I think all of these issues, uh, the likelihood that there will be ample supplies from West Africa, uh, particularly ahead of the, uh, the key Christmas season, uh, means that uh, prices have been pushed down. Mm -hmm. But that said, I think there is a big question mark hanging over Ghana's next season. Uh, Cocoa Bod has decided to cut by half the fertilizer subsidies for next season and also to suspend the free spraying program. And this will have a big impact on yields. So I think bearing that in mind, and also the fact that cocoa is generally quite cheap now compared to prices over the last two or three years, I would expect to see a rally in prices in the final quarter of the year. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about uh, coffee because you've got a situation playing out where overall Arabica and Robusta coffee prices uh, fell back for the month of May, but uh, you've got strong supply uh, coming through from places like Uganda, for example. So, so what does this mean for, for Uganda where you've got uh, the, the supply for the end, you know, up to the end of May up 76% and that being offset to a degree by softer prices? Well, I think with Uganda, we're seeing a real recovery in um, uh, the coffee sector. Last season, uh, there was bad weather. It was affected by pest infestation as well. And we saw a, a drop in exports. And that's why they're so strong, um, uh, the recovery in the first four months of this year. That's certainly good for Uganda. But ultimately, the price outlook is very uncertain. Um, Arabica and cocoa uh, and uh, Robusta prices have both fallen very sharply in, the li in recent years and also in, in recent months. And this is because there are ample supplies on the market and the expectation that Brazil will produce another bumper crop and this will more than offset concerns about the impact of the Roya rust in Central America. So ultimately even though Uganda is going to increase its robusta exports, it has markets for its robusta, when it comes to prices it's going to remain at the mercy of the international markets. Mm -hmm. Moving on to maize which had uh, a better month than most of the other soft commodities uh, rising by 3.2 percent and certainly a standout. Uh, you've got the underpin coming through from, uh, from, a, from, from factors like here in South Africa where we've got maize uh, forecast uh, coming through and uh, slightly below expectations. Zimbabwe also coming through with shortages uh, being announced. Are those enough to, to dent global maize supplies? 
Well, unfortunately, um, uh, when it comes to soft commodity production, Africa in general is a very small producer. It's only in the case of cocoa that you get around 70% of the cocoa from uh, West Africa. But when it comes to things like cotton, it's 5%, and the same goes for maize. Ultimately, there are uh, uh, ample supplies of maize in East and Southern Africa. And what is interesting is that we're seeing that when there are shortages, for example, Zimbabwe at the moment, they are meeting these shortages uh, by supplies from other African countries. In the case of Zimbabwe, they've imported 150,000 tons from Zambia, which is now becoming the breadbasket for the region. Mm -hmm. But I think the concern in the terms of South Africa is they have steadily throughout this season been downgrading their forecast for production, and uh, stocks have fallen to below a million tons. So there is a concern that unless um, this changes and we start seeing a surge in new supplies coming in, that uh, we could be facing potential shortages in South Africa. And just like last season, they'll have to start importing maize even while they're exporting it to international markets. Mm -hmm. Certainly is concern here in South Africa. That being said, uh, not a concern on the, on the sugar production front with uh, sugar forecast when it comes to production overall uh, being upgraded in South Africa and that also mirroring what's taking place on the global scene. So just run us through dynamics on the supply front for sugar. Well, it's a very positive outlook for South Africa. Um, uh, the country is expecting to produce 2.1 million tons of sugar this season. That's a real recovery after the impact of drought over the past two years. And it's on track to be back as by far the largest producer in Africa. We're also seeing, for example, Mozambique is really uh, starting to realize its potential as a sugar producer. Uh, its exports are up massively this year and will likely increase further. Um, and also Kenya, we're seeing, is finally uh, upping its sugar production. The problem for Kenya is that it still has big problems with cane poaching, which essentially means farmers selling uh, their sugar cane to whoever comes by in a truck and offers them the best price, which can often leave local millers who've supported them lacking cane to crush and forcing them to shut down operations. But in terms of the sugar price outlook, unfortunately, um, it's not very good. It's very bearish. Uh, there are ample supplies coming in, particularly from Brazil, uh, onto international markets. We're looking at a third successive year of global surpluses. So ultimately, within Africa, I think we will see it'll be good for the local consumer. There'll be ample supplies, prices will go down, but for some of the exporters, I think they could see their export revenues being cut.